Hey guys, today I'm going to be uh, doing a tutorial on animation in After Effects and also blending techniques. Uh, this um, request was given in by uh, this guy or girl right now. Uh, they said, um, can you post on how to overlay your effects on other video on and how it is animated? So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to uh, be showing you that. Uh, there's a lot of different sorts of things which you can do with animating. Um, now, for example, you can go from something as basic as this, which I've uh, just made for you here, when a word just goes around like that, and it gets smaller, it rotates, it moves, and its opacity goes down. To something complicated, if I can find it, uh, like this. There is so much that there, there is a difference for you can change so much just with um, you can see all this. This is all animation. All these little sort of uh, diamonds there are or circles. This is all animation. Um, might not complicated to you, but honestly, once you sort of get the gist of it, it's really easy. It <laughs> it just comes naturally to you. Um, Here's another example of that. Uh, let me show you. Now this is a good example of blending techniques. We've got sort of like an explosion of some kind. And that's sort of blended in. Um, let's let it run through for a little bit. You've got all these sorts of sparks and lines and they've all been blended in as well. And they've all got their own sort of blending technique which I will also show you. See, you can see uh, all these sort of swirling round like so and these have all been blended um, instead of the word blended I like to use the word composited because it makes uh, to me that's what I do usually I composite videos and this is basically what I'm covering today I'm covering compositing and making things look as though they're there or more sort of organic um, so uh, for example I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of animation so let's say that we start like this you know this we just got a, some text I'll show you how to do that, do that. Um, click on the text tool type something in <coughs> so we've got our text um, just drag that around like this let's move that and now by clicking on this or pressing Y um, then what you can see that little sort of cross right there. That's going to be our sort of pivot point. So you want to uh, a pivot point. In a sec, let me just get the rotate tool. Is where it's going to rotate from. So if the pivot po uh, the pivot tool was in the middle, and I rotated it, it would go from the center. So I mean, um, which might leave that. Um, so yeah, so the pivot points in the middle. Um, let's start off with the word there. Um, then what we're going to do is, if you press P, then you get the position. And then if you hold Shift, you press R, then you get the rotation. You Shift and press T, just holding down Shift. And you hold Shift, and then you press S, and you get. So you, then you get T is opacity, R is rotation. S is for scale, and P is for preci uh, precision. Uh, precision. Oh, ah. <laughs> um, anyway, right. So you know it's still plain. We haven't done anything yet, but you, you might notice these stopwatches down the side here. These are going to be what's animating our clip. So when you click on this, it's going to remember what um, sort of numbers they are at this time on this frame which is zero 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 um, so we're going to do that for all of them so it's remembered all these numbers for this point in time and if we move forward to one second and then if we move it you keep your eye on the position numbers you'll see that the numbers change and it's it's recorded now save those numbers at that keyframe it. it just automatically has a keyframe. 
and what it automatically does is it um, it makes a keyframe and it motion tweens it and that's when it comes up, you see these little little dots that is uh, for each frame it's position it's ah <laughs> position that's the word I'm looking for um, so if you see there it sort of connects them together and it moves smoothly between them and now we, if we uh, you can also change the scales to keep your eye or we can even just drag these numbers and it will change um, so you don't actually have to drag the corners which you can do here if I'm holding shift to keep its shape otherwise I'll do this hold shift yeah I'm going to keep 100 with that um, and you've got the rotation this is the angle that it's at and this is how many times it rotates it's rotated already. So if you keep your eye on this bit right there, you see that the number goes up from 0 to 1. No. And that's because it's gone round once. Okay? So I'll show you what that's useful for. So if we move over to where we're doing all the keyframes, um, we, if we change this to 1, then it will rotate around one time. Okay? Alright. Now the opacity, opacity pretty basic, it goes from 100% opacity to 0%, basically how see-through it is, you know what opacity is, um, yeah, so that's, that's that. Um, now compositing um, is kind of my speciality in After Effects, and uh, making things look more real. So one of the things which we can do is we can add an emotion blur. So if we click on this little do thingy here thing there, which looks like a load of balls, um, and then we click on this one, and that that does it. So if you had loads of layers, um, and it was taking up loads of time just to um, uh, sort of render out each frame like it's doing, um, then you can just turn the mo fast motion blur for the whole comp. This is the composition, and then you know it doesn't take as long, and then you can turn it all on. I think when you run when you render it, it turns it on automatically though, so that's pretty good. Just in case you forget to turn it on. Um, so if we have a look at that, you can see that sounds like a little bit better. But let's say I want this to be a bit smoother, so it doesn't have a sudden start and a sudden stop. Well, a good trick for that. Let's just highlight all our keyframes. Is you press F9. Okay. Okay, that, that, that won't work whilst I'm recording. <laughs> um, but you can right click, keyframe assist. I think it's. I haven't done this without. There we go. It's easy. Uh, easy ease. Yeah, F9. There we go. So you can see it slowly starts and then it slowly stops All right now if I just get a texture for us just pause this okay so I'm just going to drag a texture in here okay once that's in I'm going to drag that underneath my text and then we've got a sort of wood texture okay so you know definitely you know if I want to make this text look as though it's sort of part of the word or it, you know it just seems more sort of connected to the image it doesn't seem so not attached to it um, if you look here you can see mode mode yeah if you can't see it it's um, it'll probably be like that or like that so there's two buttons down here which is this one and this one which bring up these two. Uh, so this is the uh, what is it? transfer mode. That's the one. Um, that's what this is. And uh, so it's set on normal at the moment. And um, down here it has alpha add and luminosity. Blah blah blah. We don't really need that. I, I don't usually need that. Um, can't see it. Um, so if you want to use it to make an image brighter, you use add. 
and that's actually made that image brighter through that text. Or I, I'd recommend using something along add or screen um, when you're using things like the Chidori effect, which I was going on about here. I think that's actually what I did in one of my other videos. Hang on a sec. Hang on a second. In this video, I think I used screen or add for this, can't remember. And what you may also notice is that it's got motion blur along here. So that's the uh, effect I was talking about. And this is all just keyframing and uh, you know just moving it over. Um, you see here, I've added a mask in. I'll cover that in another tutorial if you want me to eventually. See it's still behind my head. And there's an optical flare. Thanks to Andrew Kramer. Thank you, Andrew Kramer. And bam. But yeah, that's, that's all including things like motion blur and using things like screen and all that jazz. Um, I mean, what I recommend is that you're just playing around with them and seeing which transfer mode you like. Because for different scenarios, uh, for different sort of lighted videos, you don't actually know what is going to look best. So, to be honest, with this, um, you may not realize, but I've actually blended um, this uh, Santa's sleigh um, let's see if I can give you an example um, yeah because it's blended at the moment if I can just open this up is uh, one sec. there you go is, uh, they're set to darken the layers are actually set to darken if you can see they're actually sort of red Black, red, black, red, black, red, black, red. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're actually set to darken, so they're not, uh, they're not completely, you know, just taking all the colour out of the image. They're sort of blending with it a bit more. And that also allows the sort of grainy effect from the dark night, uh, uh, you know, because it was dark, to actually go through it, which, um, which really makes it feel more part of the video. Um, so that's kind of useful. And then there's there's something else. Um, I think this is that. I'll just load. Okay. So you can see that it doesn't blend perfectly here. Um, you know, it's still got a few of those bits coming through here and there. And uh, I've got some particles over over that at some point. Um, so if I turn it on, and you see it sort of blends it a little bit more. It's a long sort of trick I use. It's a preset on Andrew Kramer's site. Um, I mean, it, it worked fine at this location because it was really dark, but if we were filming in somewhere sunny, then I don't think it would work as well. It's, uh, so let me just go to my presets. Okay, um, it is on uh, videocopilot.net. I'll uh, post a link for that in the description uh, to the presets. There's something called Fast Film Grain, and uh, yeah, on these preset videos, we'll probably show you how to install that. Um, and then you just drag this onto an adjustment layer. And talking about blending techniques, I said it's an overlay. And then you get this. And it blends it to the image a bit better. Um, I'll just find you a site. It's very good. There he is, Andrew Kramer. Um, yes, I recommend this guy. Fantastic! He's got all these free plugins, which I'm uh, just so grateful for. They've really helped out a load of times. Um, yeah, I'll be posting this link in the um, description. <coughs> Let me scroll down a bit. I think it's here. It's fast film grain, and then it sort of makes things blend to other things better. Um, so you know, I've I think I've covered everything. I hope that you found this interesting. Uh, I hope you've learned something from it. 
if you're just starting After Effects, I think it should cover quite a few questions which I had when I first started. Um, so yeah, uh, hope you find, found this tutorial helpful, and have a merry, merry Christmas. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.